Good morning, Europe. Thank you for starting your day with us. Here's a look at Friday's top stories. A humanitarian catastrophe in Mariupol as the Russian assault leaves civilians trapped and without basic supplies. A dead end for diplomacy after high-level talks go nowhere. Russia again says Ukraine has chemical weapons, but the West says the claim is a false flag. And European nations scramble to reduce their dependence on Russian gas. But it's likely to be a slow and costly process. As Russians surround Kyiv, inhabitants try to escape during the few hours of ceasefire. Moscow insists it will open humanitarian corridors, but Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has denounced the offer as a trap. In cities like Mariupol, the situation is desperate. Mariupol, Mariupol and Volnovaka remain completely blocked. We did everything necessary to make the humanitarian corridor work, but Russian troops did not cease fire. Despite this, I decided to send a convoy of trucks containing food, water and medicine to Mariupol anyway. The heavy shelling over the city of Mariupol left the devastating images of a hospital destroyed by Russian artillery. Moscow says it was a staged attack and denies any responsibility. The U.S. sees traces of war crimes. Russian aviation hasn't carried out any mission to hit targets on the ground in Mariupol area. The analysis of statements made by representatives of Kiev nationalist regime and photographic material from the hospital leave no doubt. The airstrike that allegedly took place is a completely staged provocation to maintain anti-Russian hype for a Western audience. Uh, we absolutely, Matt, are supportive of efforts to document and to investigate reports uh, of potential war crimes in Ukraine. Uh, the fact is that we've seen very credible reports of deliberate attacks on civilians, uh, which would, under the Geneva Conventions, constitute uh, a war crime. More than two million Ukrainians have fled the country since the beginning of the invasion. Around two-thirds have gone to Poland. Well, I'm here in the parking lot on the outskirts of Lviv. Uh, right next to the road that leads to Poland and I'm waiting for uh, an evacuation bus coming from Kiev that will take uh, people to uh, the Polish border. Um, now uh, the flow is uh, continuous in Lviv in western Ukraine. Uh, on Wednesday some 35,000 people uh, arrived in, uh, in the city from various places that were hard hit by the Russian offensive, um, some, uh, many from uh, the city of Sumy near the Russian border. And uh, these people uh, were uh, able to evacuate thanks to the opening of humanitarian corridors. Now it's hoped that some more corridors will be open, particularly in Mariupol, which uh, has suffered uh, you know, a huge destruction and the world was outraged by the bombing of a, a children's hospital there. Now, mean t meanwhile, in uh, Lviv, people are be beginning to um, wonder, uh, you know, when or if uh, Vladimir Putin will decide to move his offensive to the west of the country. Um, there are, you know, speculations about a World War II scenario uh, when the, the city, the German city of Dresden was bombed to ashes. Uh, it's true that the, the high international presence here and the uh, huge numbers of refugees uh, could, um, it is said, be, you know, um, motivation for Vladimir Putin to strike this area, which is uh, one of the, you know, most um, anti-Russian uh, regions in Ukraine. In any case, uh, the destruction that has already been caused in Ukraine is considered um, as, you know, uh, the most important since World War II in Europe. I'm Valery Goria from Lviv for Euronews. Food and medicines in, 
terrified civilians out. A convoy of vehicles has departed from Zaporizhia in southern Ukraine with humanitarian supplies destined for Mariupol. Local authorities have accused the Russian army of committing war crimes and claim 1,300 civilians have died here so far. With the infrastructure completely destroyed, mass grave burials are sadly the safest option. I want for this to be finished. I don't know who's guilty, who's right, who started this. Damn them all, those people who started this. What do I feel? I have to live on. Sandwiched between Crimea and the Donbas region, Mariupol has been one of the hardest hit cities since the war began on February the 24th. At that time, it had half a million inhabitants. I'm Tanya Bonda, and my children are still alive. I have nine kids. Pray for Maripol. We are being bombed from all directions. Pray for mothers with children, please. It's very hard here. We have no water, no food, no electricity. It's so scary. International condemnation following the shelling of the pediatric hospital has failed to secure a ceasefire for the safe evacuation of civilians. J. Marcus, Euro News. The formal handshake that the Turkish foreign minister gave as a welcome to his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, contrasted starkly with the warm embrace that Melvut Chavashola gave to the foreign minister of Ukraine, Dmitro Kuleba, before the start of the first high-level meeting between Russia and Ukraine to discuss the war. The Turkish foreign minister met separately with each of the ministers and their delegations before the trilateral meeting began on Thursday. He said that it hoped it would pave the way for a meeting between the two leaders of the countries currently at war with one another. Kyiv came to the meeting ready to find a diplomatic solution and discuss the neutrality demanded by Russia. Moscow reiterated that Ukraine must recognize the independence of the self-proclaimed Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics which it supported militarily since 2014. No progress was made at talks between the Ukrainian and Russian foreign ministers in Turkey. The sides did not come with any results on the ceasefire or the humanitarian corridors in the besieged cities of Ukraine. The foreign minister of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba, said that uh, Moscow was still demanding Ukraine surrender and uh, that Kyiv uh, has no intention of doing that. The Foreign Minister of Russia, uh, Sergei Lavrov, said his country's initiative on humanitarian corridors remains valid and uh, stressed that the routes are to be determined by those who control the situation on the ground and reiterated Russia's demand for the neutrality of Ukraine. Lavrov also said that Russia did not plan to attack other countries and said that it did not attack Ukraine either. He also said he did not believe there was a threat of a nuclear war. Both sides, however, confirmed uh, their commitment to continue the dialogue, but it was not clear what the next step would be at this point. Meanwhile, the Deputy Chairman of Russia's Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, today promised, quote, a principled and tough response to the withdrawal of Western companies from Russia. He said that the Russian government is working on the measures, one of which would be the nationalization of the property of those companies and warned that it will be very difficult for them to come back. Galina Polonska, Euronews.